So the next part of our lecture will be about neurulation. So neurulation is the embryonic development of the nervous system. And the embryonic period is actually the period of organogenesis, which is from third to eighth week of development. And development of the three germ layers to differentiate tissues and organs. For the summary of ectodermal germ layer derivatives, we have the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, sensory epithelium of the ear, eye, and the nose. We also have the epidermis including the hair, nails, and pigments, and others include the subcutaneous glands, mammary glands, pituitary gland, and the enamel of the teeth. So, this is the embryonic disc. So, during the third week of its development, the epiblast experiences a number of complex changes that lead to the differentiation of the three embryonic germ layers. So, it all begins with the appearance of the primitive strip, which is the accumulation of cells along the midline. Okay, this is the primitive strip. So, this image is actually an embryonic disc viewed dorsally. So, the red arrows show the schematic migration directions of the epiblast cells to their points of final destination. Okay? So, the first, um, the numbers that you see here above the image is actually pertaining to the different parts for you to be able to determine which is which. Okay, so for example, number one would be the primitive groove. Number two is the primitive peat. Number three is the primitive node. Number four is the oropharyngeal membrane. Five is the cardial plate. Six is the sectional edge of the amniotic membrane. Seven is the mesoderm. 8 is the endoderm, and then 9 is the future cloacal membrane. So basically, with um, the primitive streak, it is comprised of your primitive groove, primitive peat, and the primitive node. So another representation here, this is a schematic diagram of the dorsal view of the embryonic disc during the fourth week. To be seen are the back formation of the primitive streak and the growth of the caudal process. So the primitive streak is confined to a region termed the caudal eminence and this appears at stage 11 or around 29 days. So this is the dorsal view of the primitive streak at around the 23rd day of progress or development. So number one here is the primitive streak, number two is the primitive node, and then number three is your neural tube. Number five is the um, precordal plate, number four is the cloacal membrane, and number six is the cordal process. So as... Um, the embryonic disc develops like in here around the 25th day of um, development as you see the position of the different parts has already moved to different um, directions okay so the primitive streak is the location where laterally immigrating cells sink down to form the deep layers of the mesoblast and the endoblast so it comes to the formation of the trilaminar germ disc so the mesoblast is divided into three parts first you have the paraxial plate mesoderm which surrounds the neural tube and later forms the somites in that it becomes segmented and then you have the intermediate plate mesoderm that give rise to the urogenital system. And then the lateral plate mesoderm which becomes divided into the somatopleural and splanchnopleural mesoderm. So this one shows you now the transversal section through a 23-day-old embryo 
so one can recognize the first phase of the future intraembryonic coelom. So this one is the genesis of the intraembryonic coelom at roughly 23 days. Okay, so in here you see the paraxial mesoblast for number one. For number two, it's the intermediate mesoblast. Number three is the lateral plate mesoblast. Number four is the chordal process. And then number five is actually um, seen here on the twin, uh, figure of the 25th day of development. So this is the sectional edge of the amnion. And then the sixth is the intraembryonic coelom. And then number seven, you have here your endoblast. Number eight, you have your ectoblast. And then 9, you have the somatopleur and the splanchnopleur with endoblast 4, number 10. Okay. So, other um, parts of the um, embryo, 23rd or 23 days embryos, can, can also be found here on a different um, position. So this is a transverse section with the dorsal view at around of the 25th day of development. So in here, you see now on the silomic vacuoles at roughly around 23 days as well. So just check on the different parts. You have the legend here for you to be able to identify which parts are being developed and how they change in time, so from 23 days to 25 days of development. So, in neurulation, appearance of the notochord and precordal mesoderm induces the overlying ectoderm to thicken and form the neural plate. So, cells of the neural plate are called the neuroectoderm, and their induction represents the initial event in neurulation. From the edges of the neural groove, the neural crest cells are released, out of which the largest part of the peripheral nervous system is generated. And then the median part of the epiblast thickens and forms a groove and afterwards a neural tube, out of which the central nervous system will arise. So basically, if you um, follow the path of development starting from the fertilized egg, one of the first, um, or actually it's the first system that, um, that develops in a fertilized um, egg is actually the nervous system. So more likely one of um, the earliest um, changes in a developing embryo would be the development of the notochord which will eventually be or which will eventually give rise to the majority of your central nervous system okay so the neural crest cells develop along the neural tube of the vertebrae and from and actually form various parts of the embryo like your nerves parts of your teeth skull bones and so on so, mesoderm lateral to the notochord forms blocks called your somites. Okay, so in here you will see that it looks like um, um, muscular compartmentalization. So, parang may mga um, divided uh, muscles okay, around or at the sides of your notochord. And then, lateral to the somites, the mesoderm splits to form the coelom or the body cavity. So, coming from here or coming from the same uh, image of a developing embryo, let's check the cross-section. So, in here you will see the archenteron, which will eventually now be developing as your digestive cavity. And then here, the somites, you have now there your neural crest cells, the neural tube at the middle, and then you have the notochord that will eventually be your spinal cord and then the coelom. Okay. So here it shows you the beginning of neurulation in the cervical region 
wherein this is the formation of the neural crest or the neural plate stage. So uh, the neural group forms and then the cells of the future neural crest are in orange. So here. So the arrow show the direction of the lateral folding. So one is the ep epiblast, two is the neural tube or the neural groove, and then number three is the neural crest. So they, the formation actually or the direction is inwards, making a lateral folding. So letter A here is the neural plate stage. Again, hence it's plate. So usually, uh, pag sinabi natin plate, uh, medyo um, derecho pa siya. But, in the, but then, kapag ka nagkakaroon na ng neural groove stage, so nagkakaroon na, pag sinabing groove, parang nagkakaroon na ng uka or nagkakaroon na ng bendy. Okay. So the neural plate soon curves inwards forming the neural tube and then the neural tube will become the central nervous system which includes the brain and the spinal cord. So here again neural plate and then ev eventually um, infolding and then the neural crest cells here and then it will eventually um, diminish okay and then leaving or um, letting alone the neural tube at the middle no? parang nagse separate na yung mga neural crest cells in between your uh, layer uh, outer layer of your ectoderm and your formed neural tube so in here you will see the migrating neural crest cells or the neural group stage for figure number 27 and then for figure number 28 you will see the neural crest cells after a completed detachment of the neural tube stage okay so again with the uh, migrating neural crest once it has completed already its process it will eventually detach leaving um, you know the notochord separated from the ectodermal cells okay So, the two transitional structures, the notochord and primitive streak, can lead to developmental anomalies when they are not completely reabsorbed. So, first, we can uh, have a sacrococcygeal teratoma, which forms itself from remainders of the primitive streak and the cord, uh, chordoma from that of the notochord. And then next, you have the caudal dysplasia, which comprises a group of syndromes that affect the lower extremities and the intestines. So if you know your um, directional terms when you say caudal, it's something that's um, posterior, okay? Nasa baba ng katawan. And then an incomplete closure of the cranial folds of the neural tube leads to anencephalia or anencephaly. And then when the same phenomenon happens in the caudal part of the neural tube, various forms uh, of spina bifida is also a resulting um, developmental anomaly. Okay, So in here on figure number 4, the transverse section of the level of the primitive group, so it will show you the level of uh, immigration of the epiblast cells that form the future mesoblast as well as the endoblast and replaces the hypoblast. So, again, with the primitive um, group is number one, and then the uh, direction is parang outward, okay, and then you have the um, epiblast cells at the top, and then number three is the extra embryonic mesoblast. Number four is the uh, def definitive endoblast. Number five is the invading epiblastic cells. And then number six is the hypoblast. So for the molecular regulation of the neural induction, so a transforming growth factor beta or TGF beta family member which blocks bone morphogenic protein BMP4 
and ventralizes ectoderm and mesoderm. It is responsible for the induction of the neural plate. Okay. So, BMP4, if present, causes the ectoderm to become the epidermis and then the mesoderm to become intermediate and lateral plate mesoderm. So, nogin, cordin, and folistatin inactivates BMP4 and causes neurulation. So, it is present in the primitive node, notochord, and precordal mesoderm, and it neutralizes only the forebrain and the midbrain. Okay, so basically, um, the presence of these um, factors or regulators, um, if they are present, they will inactivate BMP4 causing uh, the progress of the neurulation. But if not, it causes the ectoderm to become epidermis and the mesoderm to become intermediate and lateral plate mesoderm. Okay. And then we also have the WNT3A and FGF or fibroblast growth factor which induces caudal neurulation to form the hindbrain or the spinal cord. And we also have the retinoic acid which organizes craniocaudal axis which causes respecification of cranial segments to caudal ones by regulating the gene expression or the expression of homeobox gene. So, this is very important for, you know, for the cells to be directed kung kailangan ba um, cranio papunta sa ulo or pag sinabing caudal papunta naman sa baba. Okay? So, usually that's the movement of, um, in the initial movement of the cells in a, in an, um, in an, developing uh, in, in a developing embryo okay craniocaudal and this homeobaxin is very important because uh, it directs those cells on where they could actually or where they should go okay so please um, be keep in mind this um, different factors for the regulation of the neural induction so this uh, is a representation of the homeobox genes. So uh, an example we have here is for the antenna pedia, okay, and by thorax, which are classes of drosophila and conserved homologous genes of the same classes in humans. So during evolution, these genes have been duplicated such that humans have four copies arranged in four different chromosomes. And then, homology indicated in color and paralogy in number. So, it expre uh, the expression of the gene is from cranial to caudal direction and retinoic acid modulates expression of these genes with those at 3' prime end being more responsive. Okay? So, kung mapapansin nyo, actually, the color gives you now the idea that um, the parts, okay, of this uh, certain type of uh, genes or copies of the genes are actually for cranio development or it can be caudal. Okay? So, for example, in here, uh, makikita nyo na yung color na light blue and then violet and then itong parang orange. More on cranio sila. Cranio part ng um, bithorax and antinapedia. Okay, so the homeobox genes, okay, sila yung nagre-represent ng mga, um, yung mga development na nangyayari between different species. So, parang uh, halos nagkakasing tulad sila. So, kung mapapansin nyo, ganun din dun sa caudal part, yung mga colored na mga boxes na yan, kung ikukumpara from this species to this, yeah, to this species and this other species, parehas sila. Halos. Okay? Nandun sa may caudal part yung development ng mga specific um, genes na yun. Okay? So, anterior or the 3' prime end is actually more responsive compared to the posterior or the late uh, or the caudal parts of your body. Okay? So, that's basically uh, the idea um, behind homeobox genes. 
So, they are conserved homologous genes of the same classes in uh, different species. Okay? So, other events in new relations. So, again, we have here the neural crest derivatives. So, as the neural folds elevate and fuse, cells of the lateral border of the neural crest begin to dissociate from their neighbors with two migration pathways. So, the first one is the dorsal pathway. It is through the dermis where they will enter the ectoderm through holes in the basal lamina forming the melanocytes. And the ventral pathway through the anterior half of each somite to become a sensory ganglia, sympathetic and enteric neurons, Schwann cells, and cells of the adrenal medulla. So, apart from this one, we have here a table that shows you the neural crest derivatives. So, ibig sabihin lang nun na pagka nabuo na yung inyong neural crest, eventually this neural crest will also give, um, you know, will already also give rise to different um, parts or different organs or components of the body. Okay. So, next, derivatives of the neural placodes. So, two bilateral ectodermal thickenings, otic placodes and lens placodes become visible at the cephalic region by the time the neural tube closes. So, its derivatives include your ear, lens, nose, and hypothesis. So, basically coming from uh, this uh, or the name itself, otic, more on uh, hearing and then of course for the lenses for these are for the eyes okay and then derivatives of the stomodium and the proctodium so the stomodium is a shallow median invagination of the ectoderm of the head so it will give rise or it will have a oral plate formation which give rise from the evagination of the archenterons towards the stomodium as oral plate ruptures and formation of anterior ectodermal and posterior endodermal. And then the result is the formation of mouth with tongue, teeth enamel, epithelial tissue of the oral cavity, pit and pituitary gland. And then for the proctodium, it is the fate of the blastopore that leads to the formation of the cloaca or the anal. Okay, so this picture shows you the different parts of, um, you know, the development. Okay, so in here you will see anterior, the anterior neuropores and then eventually you will have the posterior neuropores. You have the pericardial barge, bulge, so eventually this is already denoting that it also uh, depicts also the start of uh, the formation of your heart. And then you also have the first and the second pharyngeal arches. And then after 28 days, here you will see now your otic placodes and then the lens placodes. And then, of course, the vitellin duct, umbilical cord, and alentua. And then the limb bridge. So eventually, it will already uh, show you that little by little, the limbs will also give, uh, will all, also, um, will also um, develop already in time. Okay. So this image would show you the new relation in a frog embryo. So in here, as you see, there's already the formation of the neural folds. So in a cross-sectional view, at the top, you will see the neural plate and then the neural fold. And then the notochord, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, the endoderm, and then the archenteron. So, the neural tube formation, again, it's like this, from neural plate and then the neural fold. And then eventually, um, the dissociation of the neural crest cells and then the formation of the neural tube. And then here is already the formation of somites. So, this is um, the progressive changes of the neurula of a frog embryo. So, for the fates of the mesoderm, there are actually different representative chordate embryos. Here on this image, as you see, we have the amphioxus. This is actually a type of an invertebrate. 
It's also called, uh, commonly called as the lancelet. And then we also have the telios. So when you say telios, more likely these are fishes. And then turtles. And then we also have a urodil. Uh, a urodil is um, a type of salamander, a group of salamander. And then you also have the shark and then the man. So in here, um, the mesoderm is um, colored in black black cells with uh, white nuclei and will segment to form the somites lateral to the notochord. So C is um, denoted by your C loom and then N is your notochord. Okay, so this is the neural groove and then this one or this part here is um, the future notochord. So, the outer cells are for the ectoderm and then the inner cells are more likely on the endoderm. So, these are the different um, confirmations of the fate of the mesoderm um, in different types of species or embryos of different spe uh, model um, species. Okay. So, for the fate of the mesoderm, the derivatives of the mesodermal germ layer. Um, first, we have the dorsal mesoderm or the epimere. And then the next one is the intermediate mesoderm or the mesomere. And then the lateral mesoderm or the hypomere. So, the image that you see here is the transverse section showing the development of the mesodermal germ layers. Um, letter A is day 17, B is day 19, C is day 20, and D is day 21. So the thin mesodermal sheet gives rise to the parachial uh, mesoderm or the future somites, and then intermediate mesoderm for the future excretory units, and then the lateral plate, which will split into parietal and visceral mesoderm layers lining the infraembryonic cavity. So, the derivatives of the epimere or the fate of the dorsal or paraaxial mesoderm. So, first you have the dermatome, the dermis of the skin. Cells of the dermatome migrate and interact with the ectodermal cells of the ep epidermis. And then we also have your myotome or the striated skeletal muscles. So, the stages are the following first, somite adjustment to the neural tube. Uh, migrates and then the formation and fusion of spindle shaped myoblast and then the next one is the formation of the long sensitial myotubes and then the formation of elongated multinucleated muscle cell myofibrils so the image that's um, projected right now is a figure that shows the stages in the development of a somite so as you see here, you have now a neural groove, and then this is the notochord. Eventually, again, the neural tube will develop, and then the cells here are what you call your sclerotome. And then this part is already um, the formation of the dorsal aorta. And then here, you will see now the formation of the dermomyotome, and then the sclerotome cells. And then here... This is the neural tube. You have the sclerotome, the derm, uh, derma, dermatome, and then the myotome. So this, uh, that is the course of movement. So by just checking out the color of the cells and, and their names, you will eventually see how the movement appears or how the movement goes. Okay? So next we have the, um, next is the sclerotome. So it's still a derivative of the epimere. So it will give rise to the vertebral column, the ribs, and the skull. And this arises from the chondrogenesis of sclerotome and adjacent mesenchymal cells, which will later undergo endochondrial ossification. So when you say chondrogenesis, that is the formation of your chondrocytes, it will eventually be... Uh, leading to the formation of your or the development of bones. Okay, so stages includes the induction of sclerotome cells from precartilage mesenchymal cells called chondroblasts, 
and then increasing the levels of hyaluronic acid for migration of cells and chondroitin sulfate for cartilage formation. And then the type of occurrence, um, first type is type 1 chondrogenesis which includes the secretion of collagen and proteoglycans. And then type 2 chondrogenesis is the formation of cartilage. So chondroblasts will surround the notochord and the neural tube to form your anterior part which includes your skull and then the posterior part which includes the vertebrae and the ribs. So for the molecular regulation of somite differentiation, so we have the sonic hedgehog which is produced by the notochord and the neural tube which induces ventromedial portion of the somite to become a sclerotome. And then the sclerotome cells expresses the factor Pax1 which initiates cascades of cartilage and bone forming genes for vertebra vertebral formation. And then expression of Pax3 reg regulated by WNT proteins from dorsal neural tube targets the dorsomedial portion of the somite and this event initiates expression of muscle specific gene uh, MYF5 to become epaxial musculature and then interplay between the inhibiting protein BMP4 and FGFs from the lateral plate mesoderm causes expression of another muscle specific gene we call the myoid or MYOD to form limb and body wall muscles and then the mid portion of the dorsal epithelium is directed by the neurotrophin 3 or NT3 secreted by the dorsal region of the neural tube to form the dermis. So you see here the image that shows the different um, regulators that are responsible for the different differentiation of the somites. So we have WNT, BMP, NT3, PAX3, Sonic Hedgehog, BMP4, PAX1. So the fate of the intermediate mesoderm or the mesomere includes the nephrostome that will eventually be um, become the nephron at this part and then you have the pronephric tubule which will eventually give rise to your kidneys kidney tubules collecting ducts in the ureters and then we have your pronephric duct which will give rise to the oviduct, vagina, uterus, urethra, ductus deferens, and epididymis. So those are the um, derivatives of your intermediate mesoderm. And then for the fate of the lateral plate mesoderm or the hypomere, we have the somatic mesoderm or the somatopleur. This uh, includes the lateral and ventral body wall of the trunk and parietal peritoneum except the epidermis. So it will also give rise to sternum and distal parts of the ribs, pectoral and pelvic girdles. The limbs arise as condensation of cells from somatopleur and its ectodermal coverings induced by the somites. And then the development of the limb primordia and then eventually to a limb disc and then a limb bud. And then for the splanctic mesoderm or the splanknopleur, it will give rise to smooth muscles of the gastrointestinal tract, um, connective tissue of the GIT and visceral peritoneum. The heart includes the epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium. And then the blood corpuscles and blood vessels. And then gonads, which includes the testes and the ovary so blood from the splanchnic mesoderm form in two ways first one is through vasculogenesis this is um, where in which vessels arise from blood islands and then you also have the second one which is the angiogenesis where in the new vessels arise from existing ones okay so the growth factors involved here include the FGF of fibroblast growth factor, the VEGF 
or the vascular endothelial growth factor. You also have the PDGF or the platelet-derived der growth factor and then the TGF beta or the transforming growth factor beta. So for the vasculogenesis, it looks like this, wherein you have your um, cells and then eventually um, vessels would uh, give rise to it. And then for angiogenesis, usually this is um, the one uh, that can be found in cheek development. Okay. So, yeah. Next, for the extra em uh, embryonic membranes or EEM. So, first we have the yolk sac, which surrounds the yolk and it continues with the embryonic gut. The source of nourishment of every embryo and this is a highly vascular um, with vitellin vessels being connected with circulatory channels within the embryo so yeah so for a for example a dogfish embryo with they are actually um, with their yolk sacs when they are removed from the uterus and earlier develop and they still have it during their earlier developmental stages Okay. So next we have also the alantua or the second extra embryonic membrane that arises from the cloaca as a large sac-like ev evagination. It grows into extra embryonic cilium where it meets the third EEM, the chorion. So if you combine alantua and the chorion, it is now called your chorioalantoic membrane which functions as um, respiratory organ for gas exchange and then um, the cavity is for the repository of waste from the kidney and part in association with the uterine, uh, uterine lining of the mother is called the chorioalantoic placenta okay. and then next um, amnion and chorion so this is the fluid filled sac surrounding the embryo for shock absorption and prevents dehydration so last T we have the placenta so this is a modified region of the EEM lying in an intimate association with the female reproductive tract of the viviparous vertebrates with chorionic villi to increase the nutrient absorption so the types of placenta is first we have the deciduate placenta which is or which are present in um, man so part of the uterine wall is torn away at birth so technically this is being um, removed after giving birth to avoid um, continuous blood flow or blood loss from the mother and then for the contact placenta or the second type it is found in cats and other mammals so, this is a fetal membrane simply peeling away without tearing. So, the origin, that's, that would be somatopure plus the ectoderm will give rise to the chorion and the amnion. And then, the splanchnopure plus the endoderm would give rise to the yolk sac and the alantua. So, for the fate of the endoderm, with the development of brain vesicles, embryonic discs begin to bulge into the amniotic cavity and to fold cephalocaudally forming the head and the tail fold. So formation of the foregut, midgut, and hindgut. At the cephalic end, the foregut is temporarily bounded by bucopharyngeal membrane which then ruptures on the fourth week and the hindgut terminates at the cloacal membrane which breaks on the seventh week to create the opening of the anus. So, here you will see the different derivatives of the mesoderm, okay? So, you have skeleton muscles, connective tissues, circulatory system, lymphatic systems, urinary system, spleen, etc. And then, other endodermal organs include respiratory systems such as lungs, trachea, bronchi, the digestive tract includes your pharynx and then the pharyngeal pouches. So you have pharyngeal uh, pouch one, which is the middle ear or the eustachian tube. 
and then pharyngeal pouch 2 for the tonsils, pouch 3 for the thymus and the thyroid, and then pouch 4 for the parathyroids. So, uh, it also it will also include stomach and the small and large intestines. So, digestive glands, including the liver and the pancreas, the urinary bladder, and then the primordial, uh, primordial germ cells would eventually become the sex cells. So, in this image, you will see the different pouches, pharyngeal pouches, that will eventually be um, developing to this one. Okay. So, those are the positions of the different pouches. So, for the summary, so the major stages of neurulation includes the following. So, once neural induction has occurred, the elongation slipper-shaped neural plate gradually expands towards the primitive streak. And then by the end of the third week, then the plate becomes more elevated to form a neural fold. And then the depressed region forms the neural groove. Gradually, the neural groove approach each other in the midline and fusion begins at the cervical region or the fifth somite. And fusion proceeds cranially and caudally, forming the neural tube. Upon completion or upon fusion, cephalic and caudal ends of the neural tube communicate with amniotic cavity through the cranial and caudal neuropores, which later closes at days 25 to 27. And then neurulation is complete upon the formation of closed tubular central nervous system with a narrow caudal portion spinal cord and broader cephalic portion with number of dilations called the brain vesicles. So these are the different germ layer derivatives for you to check. So how does an inner cell mass look like? So, what would be the differences at day 9, day 16, day 21, day 19, and day 17? Okay. So, this is also the summary of the different um, deriv uh, derivatives of the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm or endoderm. So, please study the following. And that ends my lecture about neurulation. Thank you.